My name is uh, Dimitris Simeonidis. I uh, work um, into various realms of uh, the energy industry, um, from uh, from research and innovation to dissemination and uh, civil society under many capacities. I am an uh, energy market analyst for um, VAS ATT. I, under the capacity that I'm going to be at Elite Africa, I'm a project manager and policy advisor uh, for a first for future where we're working on, uh, as I said, research and innovation on regenerative economy, but also stakeholder mapping, policy advisory and uh, advocacy. And finally, I am also policy lead at Young, uh, Young Leaders in Energy and Sustainability of Europe, uh, Yes Europe, where we're also mobilizing youth towards uh, policy and uh, strategy uh, within the energy and sustainability sector. Um, and regarding the research that we're doing and that I'm going to present um, a part of it at Elite Africa, uh, we're working on uh, um, uh, regenerative and renewable energy communities as ways to decentralize efficiently um, the energy grid to create new novel finance and business models uh, through public and private participation and in this way to also enhance and uh, increase energy security, energy efficiency within the uh, within the global south. We are very much interested in pursuing that in the global south because we see that there is there are a lot of pain points in rate, increasing access to electricity, access to energy, um, access to clean energy, and um, um, access to energy that can enhance um, also industrialization and. Um, uh, basically uh, create a booming economy um, that all the countries uh, we believe deserve. Dark fermentation is uh, one of the processes to essentially convert biomass into um, valuable products for energy and agriculture, one of which is actually biohydrogen. Um, there are various ways that uh, have been studied to um, generate biofuels, among which, again, uh, biohydrogen. Um, and these include anaerobic digestion, photofermentation and dark fermentation. The advantage of dark fermentation is that it can actually uh, generate biohydrogen through any kind of uh, biomass, doesn't require increasingly uh, increasing um, requirements uh, regarding heating it's a essentially simple process and uh, essentially it can also store energy in the form of hydrogen um, so what happens is that uh, we have uh, bacteria that can help um, like they can help with substrate and they can convert it um they can convert it into hydrogen on one hand and um, we have bioproducts such as biostimulants on the other it in this way it stores energy because um what we need at the end of the day uh, with renewables especially and with intermittency is to actually have energy stored in various forms including batteries including hydrogen and we see that hydrogen is actually the most efficient way to do that because um, it actually requires um, it has much smaller requirements financial in terms of infrastructure and on the other hand it can be converted in um, in, in many um, energy means um, uh, satisfying demand in uh, heating, in, in in cooling as well, in clean cooking, because we can also produce biohydrogen with it, and uh, of course in agriculture, which is also uh, very important. So it is a process that, um, um, if we have to be more specific about it, we take specific anaerobes, which are uh, bacteria, we take a type of substrate, which can be any kind of biomass, we have been looking into waste streams, we have been looking into algae um, and um, using uh, dark fermentation, which happens in the absence of oxygen and in the absence of light. That's why it's dark fermentation. We uh, generate uh, hydrogen and uh, in this way it can be stored and it can be used from the whole community. This technology 
I believe is um, of immense value to the African continent. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, several examples. The first one is um, about waste. Uh, many people might think that waste is a problem of Europe, is a problem of Northern um, America, but this is not really the case. We see, for, we see the example of food waste where um, we have uh, within the first 10 countries on food waste, we have Nigeria, we have Kenya, we have Ethiopia. And um, these countries, they have this means that they have a, a substantial amount of biomass that they generate that just goes to waste. Um, so we can utilize that. On the other hand, we have, as I mentioned, the algal biomass. Um, for, I'm using the example again of Namibia. I'm going to use the example of Tanzania, where um, seaweed cultivation, algae cultivation is already something that is happening. We can use um, river bodies such as uh, the River Congo to use freshwater algae or aquatic plants, which are also abundant. So we see an enormous amount of biomass. And next to it, an enormous amount also of opportunities to generate biomass. And next to it, we see a lot of a lot of communities that they suffer from energy insecurity. They suffer from food insecurity. They suffer from um, several of these components. We can tend to them, basically killing two birds with one stone, killing three birds with one stone. And this is this makes things um, even more exciting for uh, for the African continent. So it's it's very very much applicable and i would say that um, it is one of the solutions that can really revolutionize um, the energy sector in the continent these the size of these projects can be from very small of course to to, to enormous to ones that can cover like a whole region um, even small communities can get involved in fact and the issue with it is that even with uh, an investment of uh, 100 or 200 thousand um, dollars um, it can actually be sufficient to uh, to satisfy uh, small communities this actually makes things um, exciting because um, even a small uh, um, a small not a small set of villages for example can uh, with the help of microfinancing models and of course with public and private participation it can uh, create its own set of um, um, biohydrogen plants and um, an, an additional feature of that is that the feedstock is actually in many cases it might be it might even be for free because um, if i am a rural community i have agricultural waste that would otherwise um, just uh, disappear or get burnt um, if i am a small city i have municipal waste and sewage so we need to uh, see that uh, th th this value that actually even the smallest of communities can get involved even uh, small rural areas and rural communities this is uh, of, of great value what is my vision for the future um i think it would be it would be um like a connection essentially between the rural and the urban realm in that sense um through biohydrogen because it can be used as i mentioned in various sectors it can be used for cooking it can be used for heat for heating or cooling um for for all of these uh, supply chains for all of these value chains and depending on the context, in one sense, uh, in one case, for example, it might be needed for seasonal reasons from the farmers, and then the urban community can tend to them. And on the and, and on other um, situations, uh, rural communities can provide biohydrogen to um, the urban ones. Again, also because one of the byproducts is biostimulants, um, the urban communities can actually help. Um, uh, small villages, for example, or agricultural areas to um, satisfy their needs in biostimulants. So what I see uh, is, 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 is the future is, first of all, create a rural-urban link. Second of all is democratize um, the energy sector. So we're going to create a whole decentralized grid. Um, and then, of course, we have to add energy management, um, energy energy management um, um, software that can actually help um, share this kind of energy. And um, a third aspect, of course, is to create prosumers 
in uh, both horizontally and vertically, um, both in energy and also in agriculture, in providing biostimulants, in providing even platform chemicals from the organic acids that we can uh, that we can have. So this makes a whole sustainable supply chain full of prosumers and where everyone can actually take matters into their, their own hands and um, increase their their output um, and increase also their revenue into the into the local communities. Um, my message for the event will be that uh, this is a unique opportunity to uh, democratize energy in a way that can ensure um, energy security and also food security because we're also tending to that nexus. It is a unique opportunity because we see that um, the African continent has enormous needs for energy because it is expanding. Demographic growth is huge, also uh, economic growth is huge, and there is a need for energy. By centralized, by, through centralized solutions, having in mind the climate targets, it's impossible to, um, uh, to, to, to make this uh, economic growth actually be tangible for the citizens as well. The only way is through decentralization. So it is our chance now, but at the same time, there are huge challenges. These challenges, the, the biggest one of these is uh, to collaborate between uh, sectors, like cross-sector collaboration, and on the other hand, cross-border collaboration, international collaboration. So this is a unique opportunity to connect the dots, connect between stakeholders and bring this energy, this hydrogen revolution into Africa and to make the continent thrive through decentralization and through um, a hydrogen economy that has not built up yet to its fullest potential. And the continent has the potential to actually put it into its uh, full potential. Thank you.